everyone. Welcome to Songwriter Spotlight. We're glad to have you with us here this evening. We're coming to you from the West Tennessee Delta Heritage Center in Brownsville, Tennessee, home of the Tina Turner Museum, the Sleepy John Estes Home, and the West Tennessee Music Museum. I hope you will help me tonight in welcoming Karen Altman Latham. Karen, thank you so much for being with us this evening. Thank you so much, Sandra. I'm very thrilled to be here. Tell me a little bit about your background and how you got started in music. I was 50 years old and uh, my husband walked out on me and I was uh, just kind of not sure where I was going to go with my life. Um, I'd always been a big fan of music. I had a lot of friends who were musicians that I loved and admired and I Spent a lot of time going and listening to him play, but I was certainly a fan, um, not a performer. And one night I was out listening to music and my son walked in, my oldest son, and he had a brand new guitar and he was wanting to show it to me. And I knew he was actually just coming to check on me because I knew I'd been down. And I said, oh, what a beautiful guitar. Wow, it's so cool that you know how to play the guitar. I sure would love to learn how. Um, he said, you know, I've heard you say that before, Mom. And I said, yeah, I have, but you know, I'm 50 years old. And anyway, he said, Mom, this guitar is for you. And I want you to start taking guitar lessons. And so the very next week I took my first lesson and that was 10 years ago, so. Um, about five years ago, I started writing music, and uh, a lot of my music is written about my experiences and a lot of heartbreak and a lot of and joy as well. And so it's so nice when uh, I write something so personal that someone else connects with it or feels something, and that's probably been my favorite part of that aspect of playing and performing. You said your son came in with a guitar. Uh, obviously, he's musically inclined, and so maybe that now you know he got that from you? It could be. It really could be that way, and uh, we had no idea. And in fact, you know, both of my sons are musically inclined, and um, they both have, you know, made comments, wow, mom, you know, you did more than we ever did. And I don't know about any of that. All I know is, is that at the time, I was in a really dark place and I, the guitar was a comfort to me. So I found myself practicing way more at first than I do now. I need to get back to that period of practicing, but um, I think that I was just determined that this is where I was going to focus my energy and time. Well, tell us about the first song you're going to play for us. All right, the first song that I'm going to play, I call it number five. Um, it's the fifth song I wrote, but I decided to leave it at number five because it is, it's a telling song. I thought I'd start out on something kind of funny. So I always say that I call it number five because I never got around to naming it because this is who I am. I'm a procrastinator. Procrastinating is my game. Yes, I'm a procrastinator. My excuse is always made. Procrastinating is my game. 
things to do. Cause I'm a procrastinator. Procrastinating is my game. Cause I'm a procrastinator. the leader of the group of procrastinators. <laughs> I'm right there with you. All right, well see, some of the best people are, as it turns out. We're, we're more busy doing what we want to do. That's right, that's all right. Memories. And it makes perfect sense why it's called number five now. That's right, yeah. <laughs> Never got around to naming it. <laughs> Does being from Memphis and being surrounded by all that great music, like you said, for so many years uh, before you really got into music, how does that play into your songwriting? I, th I think in some ways, um, uh, to be honest with you, I think it, I think it helps me back because <laughs> I, I, there, the bar is so high. Uh, but then again, I have listened and watched what other people write about and I'm like oh yeah that's great and I didn't know that about that person or I didn't never thought of it that way so um I am a talker and I one of the a friend of mine said Karen I can't believe you haven't started writing and I said why would you say that and she goes because I just know you'd have something to say and so when I thought about it like that, you know, that, that did free it. So, and that was a musician friend who said that to me. So anyway, it's, I think it's been very positive overall, and it's certainly been very encouraging. You said that you kind of look at your music from the standpoint of pain. How does that play into the next song you're going to play for us? Rip Van Winkle, yeah, that is absolutely, that was actually my first song I ever wrote. And it, it, it really just wrote itself. I lived this, this life um, for a long time, and this story goes like this. It's a couple that do care for each other, and they do love each other, but they had grown apart. And one of them was really trying to pull the other one back into the relationship. And in, and in my case, there were times when each of us were in that role. At some point, I was the one saying, come come on and let's come back. And sometimes I was the one that was checked out and he was trying to, to bring it back. But um, I think it is pretty much a um, synopsis of, of the life and the that I had at the end. And it's, as I said, the song was pretty easy to write. It came out, but living it was pretty tough. So it's called Rip Van Winkle's Wife. Days go slowly past for the years Slip fast so fast and now All I want to do is we This house is full of dreams, no sun, only sad moonbeams and what, what do you want from me? I tiptoe around, try not to make a sound, yet I pray, pray you notice me.
do you see me here? Why don't you wipe my tears? Don't sleep, don't sleep our lives away. Baby, wake up, please. Can't you feel that breeze? Let's go. Let's go outside and play. Let's talk about your songwriting process a little bit. You said that you don't play the guitar as much as you did at one time. So how does your songwriting process work? Well, um, it seems like all the time, mostly in the car, I'm thinking of, of lyrics, stories, things that interest me, things that um, I would want to expand on. And so I'll think of those things. Sometimes I'll record them on my phone. Um, so I'll have those kind of floating around in my head. And then when I do sit down and practice, I do end up a lot of times um, just picking out some chords or chord progression that sounds interesting to me. And I'll go, hmm, now I wonder how I can fit that into that those thoughts I was having. And, um, and then I have to start recording and writing it down because I'll forget it as quickly as I do it, especially if it's something that I really like. So I'll record it and play it back and then I have to start writing it down. I've got a song here that I wrote, I don't know, a couple years ago that I still refer to the lyrics sometimes because my memory's not always the best now that I'm the big six O. Do you try to make songwriting a part of every day, or is it just when it comes to you, that's when you work on it? More when it comes to me. I, I really wish I was more disciplined in making it a daily thing, and I know those who are, and they're just prolific. I know a, a friend of mine that she can write 20 songs in a day, or 20 snippets of songs, and I always admire that trait, but for me, um, I feel like that I'm not as prolific, but I do feel like that I've written some pretty good stuff. So I think maybe like we talked about my, my friends, my music friends, I'm more interested in quality than quantity. So if I don't feel good about it, I'll scrap it real quick. <laughs> no one will hear it. Well, thank you for sharing some of those with us today. What are you going to play next? My husband is a built man. I don't know, I love to, I have a sense of humor and I love to pick on him and go, okay, I know what's been going on all day long and where if you try to tell me you're delivering milk, but I know what's going on. And, um, so he's like, oh, not me, not me. So I, I kind of wrote a, just a funny song um, about him being a milk man and what's really going on, so. Here we go, the mailman. Let's see. Way back when you needed a cow. Oh, but that ain't how we get the milk now. Oh, see all the ladies standing outside. You know they're waiting for the milkman to come on by. Cause he's the milkman. He comes right to your place. He's the milkman. Puts a smile on your face. He's the milkman. He's got everything you need. He's the milkman. Satisfaction never. Down the street, and he's looking for the ladies because they're always so sweet. 
sweet, cause he's the milkman. He comes back to your place, he's the milkman. Puts your smile on your face, he's the milkman. He's got everything you need, he's the milkman. Satisfaction guaranteed. You know he parks in the back where the ladies bring him. And then he brings in the order because he's smooth as silk, cause he's the milkman. He comes right to your plate, he's the milkman. Puts your smile on your face, he's the milkman. He's got everything you need, he's the milkman. Satisfaction guaranteed. Oh, milk. Does a body do? Cause he's the milkman. You know, milk, it does a body do? Cause he's the milkman. Oh, he's the milkman. He comes right to your place. He's the milkman. Puts a smile on your face. He's the milkman. He's got everything you need. He's the milkman. Satisfaction, yeah. Fun. What about your boys? Do they ever co-write with mom now that she's a musician too? No, and my youngest son is quite a songwriter and more than one time we have talked about it, but I'm sure at some point we will do that. We will get together and at a table and write and, and do, come up with something really good. What about that song that you said you needed the lyrics close by? Is that on your list to do today? Yes, it is. It is. I do have to have the lyrics close by on this one, which is kind of kind of funny um, because I wrote it and I never understood that when I would go hear my friends play or songwriters and they say they couldn't recall the words of a song they wrote. And now I get it. <laughs> and I heard uh, went out last night. Got the opportunity to hear a well-known Memphis musician. And a very, very polished musician, and she had her lyrics right there in front of her. <laughs> What's the name of this one? All right, this one is called South Dakota, and I got to tell you a little bit about it. Um, I've always, uh, when things were getting tough, um, particularly in that marriage that I referred to, um, there were times that I just wanted to bolt. I wanted to run away. But of course I didn't have children and didn't hate my husband. I just, you know, there were times when I just wanted to leave the boat. And then I, at one point I was really down and I was like, where would I go that no one would ever find me? And I put a lot of thought in it. And I said, South Dakota, who goes to South Dakota? Nobody looked for me there. There's no, really nothing over there. And then I started, um, learning a little bit about South Dakota and it's actually a very cool state and I hope to someday get to go there but I, I did write a song about I guess the, the fantasy or the backup plan that I had even though I never made it come to reality I guess there was some comfort in knowing that there was South Dakota was there so that's what this song is about so here we go by the hands from Utah, my mom is from Tennessee. I've always had this gypsy soul, not sure what it's supposed to be. So many times I dream about the perfect head play. Grab my guitar and hop in the car. Keep us safe. 
Russell, Maine, comes to me, you sit and pull them crazy holes by his side. They tell me, girl, what are you doing here? We're not ready for you now. And you got people looking for you back in Tennessee. We're gonna get you back to them somehow. Oh, no. Wait for me, South Dakota. they can find more of your music this year we we started out the year strong playing a, a, a lot and then i've had to turn down a whole lot of stuff we've had just a rough year it's just been a rough year i messed up my back and i couldn't play for for months actually coming out of everything now everything now so we just pretty much just put it on facebook word of mouth and we have to say we always have a really good crowd so that's great you know we appreciate the people that come out so if people want to follow you on Facebook what do they look for look for me Karen Altman Latham what's the name of your band Karen and the Hitmen Karen and the Hitmen and the Hitmen uh, the two guys my husband oh, and Dave Gray they both look like Hitmen to me one night we were practicing they're both big guys and they're kind of mean looking and and I said, you know, you two look like a couple of hitmen. And then I started thinking, you know, the devil and Todd are there, the hitmen, they're playing the hits, and he's hitting the guitar, and he's hitting the drum. And I said, how about Karen and the hitmen? And they were like, we love it. So there we go. That's how, what we settled on. All right. How about another song? I'm interested in the Carol King song. Uh, this song started out as I wanted to write a song about, there was a, a guy that I just kept going back to him and I knew he wasn't good for me and and we did music together and um, again we're friends now and he's a great guy but, but it just wasn't great for us and then I started thinking you know that's happened at other times in my life um, through my marriage and whatnot that sometimes it's just hard to say goodbye um, even when you know you should and then um, I started watching the TV one day and they were doing the story of uh, Carol King and Jerry Goff that they had written songs together and they had this on again, off again, stormy, many year relationship and they made a lot of great music and they uh, loved each other but they just in the end realized that, you know, they were all in water as a couple, even though professionally they were great and I was, like, wow, you know, she knows about pain. She, her, we've got some good songs out of that. 
Holy's adventure. So I wrote a song kind of about their relationship as well as mine. So it's called Carol King's Song. And here you go. It's, I call it, my husband says it's a ballad, so we'll see. And I guess it is. Many times I've tried to be alone Too many times I said not again Too many times I said enough's enough Too many times I gave in I read that book about boundaries I drew a line in the sand Now I see your face at my door Dear Lord, it's the jazz man Sometimes you need a Carol King song to take you away. Because Carol King knows a broken heart. Knows what to say. Thank you. 
Thank y'all so much for joining us this evening. I hope that you've enjoyed Karen's music as much as I have. I also hope that you have enjoyed our first season of Songwriter Spotlight. This is going to be the conclusion of our first season. We're going to take a break for the holidays, but we will be back in 2022, the first week of January, the first Thursday in January, and each first and third Thursday after that to share more songwriters and music of the West Tennessee area. So y'all be sure and have a wonderful holiday season and join us again in January. Karen, thank you so much for being here this evening. It has been so much fun and I really enjoy listening to your songs and hearing your stories. A great storyteller. What have you got to play us out on? Okay, I thought I'd end us out on something like, um, I work, I love my job, I work for the Memphis Zoo, great place to be, but every job, no matter how fun or interesting, you, you need some time off, and mine can be stressful, and uh, because I try to do right, you know, whatever, keep things on the road. And I went to my boss one day and I said, you know what? I need some time off for bad behavior. <laughs> he said, okay, Karen, you just take some time off for bad behavior. So that's what this song is called, Time Off for Bad Behavior. Mm -hmm.